thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, this morning I have been charged with the responsibility of opening batsmen. And I know the expectation is that I will play a positive innings and score some runs today. But being first, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> is nothing new to me. Mr. Speaker, America and Wallace will tell you that when they wanted to open their scorecard on making children, they had to give birth to Jeremiah and Robert first for them to be able to continue. If you went to the training school and you were to speak to Miss Daisy or Jean Ba 400 Jean Ba or Miss Diana Funnis, who I refer to as mom, or even Mr. Amide, and you ask them to recount <coughs> the experience at the Police Training Academy, and they would tell you, Mr. Speaker, that they could not associate me with no other word but first. <coughs> and if you were to go to Mikud North, Mr. Speaker, and you were to ask the children, the men and the women of this constituency about what happened on July 26th, and it was a first, Mr. Speaker. We made history in Mikud North, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> so batting first, Mr. Speaker, batting first this morning. <laughs> I was told I was the first to take some t-shirts from an office, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and as I rise, Mr. Speaker, in this August chamber to make my contribution <clears throat> on the estimates of revenue and expenditure 2023-2024, I'm reminded that the man behind this, the captain of this team, Mr. Speaker, and the member for Castries is his motto and the motto for his team and the motto for this government is putting people first. So I say all that to say, Mr. Speaker, that I am no stranger to being first. So as I gear up to face the first ball, I want to tell the opposition and the timing is correct, Mr. Speaker. The timing is very correct to see the opposition walk in. That the conditions they look good for batting today. And I say that on the premise of a primary surplus, which was recorded in the financial year 2022-2023. Don't take it for granted, Mr. Speaker, that the opposition did some serious damage to the pitch, which we inherited. In 2019-2020, they were poking holes in the ball, and they realized a primary deficit in excess of 24 million in the financial year 2020-2021. And then <clears throat> it started to rain COVID. But instead of the then captain and the member for Miku South indicating to the groundsman, Mr. Speaker, to cover up the pitch and wait for the pitch to dry up to resume play, no, he and his team continue to play in the rain. And like Pepper Pig, they were making muddy puddles, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> And they realize a further primary deficit of in excess of $327 million in the financial year 2020-2021. But the crowd would not take it, they could not take it again and ensure that the umpire raised his index finger one by one, Mr. Speaker, on July 26, and he put them out. Some were caught on the boundary in Soufre, some were bowled out in Mikud, some even ran out in Grozili. But one had wisdom enough to retire hurt at the right time and not get out, but join the winning side. But that's cricket for you, Mr. Speaker. That's cricket for you. He had a review and he won. Mr. Speaker, I will now delve into this $1.55 billion budget <clears throat> to see how the people of Pralin, the people of Mamiku, Monripo, Passius, Loba, Lao, Noki Avenue, St. Mary, La Pointe, Margaretut, Escap, and the Mikud village, and by extension, the people of St. Lucia. How can they benefit from this budget, uh, from these estimates of revenue and expenditure that was presented yesterday by the member for Castries? Just because we know that the people of Mikud North, they have been patient for decades. And I say patient for decades as it relates to getting their fair share of the budget, especially their development the developmental component of the budget. And although we as parliamentarians 
we are never really satisfied as it relates to what we get for our constituency. But I trust in the prudential leadership style of the member for Castries East. And I encourage my constituents, Mr. Speaker, to do the same. <clears throat> now, Mr. Speaker, I'll start off with my role as Deputy Speaker. Uh, and one advantage of being Deputy Speaker in its current form and not the Speaker is the fact that I can stand here, Mr. Speaker, and make representation on behalf of the legislature. The Parliament continues to work hard day in and day out to ensure that the business of the Parliament is carried out with the utmost professionalism and to ensure the comfort of the men and women who occupy the chairs in this chamber. And over the past months, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> we witnessed members walking in and out of the chamber and some members visibly yesterday, I think I saw a member wearing some jacket under his jacket, Mr. Speaker. And he wear layers of clothing because of the coolness inside of this chamber. And we were not able to regulate the air condition units as we stood the risk of not working, of the air conditions not working at all. And I'm happy today that I have seen an allocation of $261,000 on the capital expenditure on head 12 of page 25 of the estimates. And I know, Mr. Speaker, that this allocation will go a long way in facilitating the purchasing and installation of the air condition unit for this chamber and ensuring that the comfort of members in this chamber, Mr. Speaker, is met. Mr. Speaker, I think now is also an opportune time for members of the House Committee to meet and review some of the allocations for running the constituency offices. Because members have always requested and expect their request to be fulfilled. And we ask ourselves, Mr. Speaker, is $5,000 a month sufficient to pay staff, to pay rent, to pay utilities, stationery, buy furniture, I know that the Parliament staff, Mr. Speaker, like the member of Castries East, have continued to exhibit great financial management skills, but I don't know for how much longer can they stretch the 5,000 that they're receiving. So I'm hopeful that when 2024, 2025 estimates of revenue expenditure is prepared, the 1 million and 20,000 dollars that has been budgeted this year for constituency office support services, we can see an increase to that also. And I also see a slight reduction in the amount allocated for hosting and entertainment under the Parliament's budget. And I take that to mean that we may not be having as many sittings this year, Mr. Speaker. Or we may be resorting to eating a lot of ital bouillon. It seems we're moving, nobody wants to eat the good food. So I see they remove a little bit from our hosting and entertainment allowance. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I now want to move on to. I have a personal interest in the safety and security of the St. Lucian citizenry. And I did so 13 years ago, and I do so even more now, Mr. Speaker, especially given the escalation in criminal activity over the past years, and more so the past couple of weeks. Mr. Speaker, whilst I noticed that there is an allocation of about $382,000 for the regulation of salaries of police constables, and about $150,000 for the regularization of salaries of fire officers on the head 36, page 147. I could not help but flag the fact that I saw zero on the capital expenditure for fire service. Now, in times past, Mr. Speaker, I noticed that there was usually a $200,000 um, allocation on the capital expenditure for the fire service. And I don't know if there is any specific reason for that removal. But I did see a $3.175 million earmark for purchasing of vehicles for the grocery station, the Grizzly Fire Station, and for the George Charles FL, the George FL Charles Airport. Uh, oh, that's the capital. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the fire service should be very happy this year to see that their capital from 200,000, I see 3.175 million. I know that the acting fire chief and his team will welcome this initiative, Mr. Speaker. And the process of finding a home for the fire service, where the fire service can actually call their home, Mr. Speaker, is still ongoing. And I'm happy that on the head 36, I saw a $50,000 allocation to, for consultancy services to determine the way forward for the construction of the fire headquarters. I'm also very happy at the Borderly Correctional Facility, that the Borderly Correctional Facility will be receiving $150,000 for the purchase of an additional vehicle to help with the transportation of prisoners and purchase $231,000 for the purchase of specialized security equipment for the staff. And we all knew, Mr. Speaker, we saw the videos going viral. We all knew what 
The prison officers at Bodley had to endure the conditions that they had to endure. We saw the hostility on the end of the inmates, and they remain resolute in their efforts. So I'm happy that today, as a government, we're able to provide them with an allocation for one more vehicle and $241,000 for specialized security equipment for staff. And it gets better for Bodley, Mr. Speaker. As head 36, sub 21 would show that Bodley will be receiving $7.3 million for the removal and replacement of the chain link and the concrete fencing, the replacement of 133 cell locks, 247 unit security locks, and renovation to 116 inmate toilets. And we believe that, Mr. Speaker, crime cannot be fought with just the hard or draconian measures, but rather we have to adopt a multifaceted approach. And when we say that we want to see rehabilitation take place, we have to take steps, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that it actually takes place. So I'm happy that an allocation of $240,000, Mr. Speaker, was placed in this year's estimate to provide for the appointment of a doctor, a remedial teacher, a social worker, and a nurse at the Bodley Correctional Facility. I'm pleased, Mr. Speaker, to see that on page 148, the allocation of $143,592 was made for the addition of two more probation officers for the probation and parole unit. And Mr. Speaker, we know that probation officers play a key role in the fight against crime by providing social inquiry reports to the parole board to help guide their decision-making process and making an allocation to improve the current numbers by two, I know will certainly go a long way, Mr. Speaker, on easing the burden of the current crop of probation officers. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I could not help but recognize the additional $710,000 in the budget on the head 36 for the addition of 15 more police constables to the major crime unit. And Mr. Speaker, the major crime unit, those of us here who know about policing would know that the major crime unit has a responsibility for dealing with the investigations of homicides and serious crimes. And from my own experience of being a police officer, I know that one of the issues plaguing this department, Mr. Speaker, is a lack of manpower. So to see this addition in the budget is really heartwarming, and it is the hope of this government that as we increase human resource, Mr. Speaker, as we increase the human resource capacity of the departments like the major crime unit, officers will now have an opportunity to give more attention to their matters, and hopefully we can see an improvement in the detection rate of homicides in St. Lucia. The major crime unit does not only receive a boost in human resource, but they also receive $165,000 for the purchase of equipment and software. And Mr. Speaker, the drug unit, which is very dear to my heart, um, I worked, I think this is a place that I, I, I served the longest as a police officer. I'm happy to know that they're not forgotten and the men and women of the drug unit, especially the Northern Division, they will be happy to know that there is an allocation in the estimates for, in, for this year for, to complete the refurbishment of the drug squad building in Latok. And I was still a police officer, Mr. Speaker, when the officers from the drug unit had to evacuate where they were being housed and take up home in a building which is not fit for purpose. And for various reasons, the building is not fit for purpose. And to date, they are still being housed in that unit. So I'm happy to see, Mr. Speaker, that there is an allocation um, for the refurbishment and the completion of the drug squad building in Latok. So, Mr. Speaker, a lot of emphasis will be placed this year on various agencies with responsibility to combat crime, and the Prime Minister made it very clear that this year is the year to, 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 to fight crime, national security and health. So a lot of emphasis will be placed on the departments and the agencies that have the responsibility to fight crime. And I applaud the efforts of the member for Castries East for taking serious steps, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that we deal with this crime situation head on. And I know that we'll hear a lot more about the various initiatives that the government will embark upon this year um, in its effort to arrest crime when the government presents its policy statement next month. I now look at Mikud North, Mr. Speaker, and I go to agriculture and fisheries. And I see the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries has given me the nod. And I pray that he continues to give me the nod as I continue with my presentation. Mr. Speaker, Mikud North is known to have been an anchor in the economy of St. Lucia for his contribution to the economy in the heyday of the banana industry. Mr. Speaker, as this industry dwindled, so did the economic activity in Mikud North. And to date, we have not been able to rebound from that shock. 
But there is now an opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to diversify and to regenerate some, of the, some kind of economic activity in the constituency. So it is with that hope that I'm excited to see on the head 41, survey head 49, a provision of $300,000 for the enhancement of honey and CMOS production. Now, Mr. Speaker, if I'm being honest with you, I'd love to see an allocation a lot bigger than that, given the number of families in my constituency who depend solely and some very heavily on the production of CMOS to make a living. But I welcome, and I know that the, the CMOS farmers at Port and Prale also welcome the fact that some consideration was given to that particular sector. But, Minister for Agriculture, I trust that we can see a lot more money being pumped into this industry to give our CMOS and our apiculture farmers a real chance on the international front. Under that same head, I see an allocation of $1 million for the Banana Management Unit project. And I know some persons share the view that we should abandon the banana project altogether. Um, but Mr. Speaker, the harsh reality is that demand for banana in the region and internationally is very high. And the unique taste of our bananas, of the bananas that Patch, Veno, Desi, they produce, Mr. Speaker, it cannot be compared to any other. So I'm hoping that the banana farmers in my region can benefit from this project and we can see increasing productivity as it relates to the banana industry. So I'm calling on the um, Minister of Responsibility for Agriculture and Fisheries, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that when the disbursements are made, that the farmers in Potui, the farmers in Wayon, those in Piton, those in Maho, they too can be beneficiaries of the Banana Improvement Project, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I see on the subhead 37 of head 41, Livestock Development, and there's an allocation for the relocation of the Boseju Agricultural Station. And the funds will approve, Mr. Speaker, to facilitate infrastructural work at the Volet Agricultural Farm Station. And I know that quite a few of my constituents are direct beneficiaries of this project, and I look forward to seeing even more of my constituents, Mr. Speaker, um, being ben benefiting from the project upon its completion. And I also notice there's, in the grants and components, um, section of, of the estimates on the agriculture, Mr. Speaker, an allocation of $10,000 for farmers with disabilities. And is that in as much as, Mr. Speaker, I want to knock the table and say thank you and say, I think it's a start, Mr. Speaker, but I think that we can do a lot better. Um, I see a growing number of persons with disability, Mr. Speaker, entering the farming arena, and we need to provide them with the proper support. We need to ensure that they're given the proper support and assistance and encourage them to become self-sustained individuals. But the current allocation does not provide a really big window, Mr. Speaker, for us to realize um, um, what we're trying to achieve under this program. It's a start. It's a start. I agree it's a start, Mr. Speaker, but my hope is that um, as we continue, we're going to see an increase in the subvention um, or in the grant given to the farmers with disability as this plays an integral role, Mr. Speaker. Key role, and I have farmers who call me, farmers who are involved under this program who call me, Mr. Speaker, um, and ask me to make representation on their behalf because they are involved in the, in the, it's already a strain to have a disability. It's a further strain to have a disability and be involved in the farming business, Mr. Speaker. And I think that if individuals are making that stride to help themselves, that we can do a little better in terms of assisting them. So I hope that the Minister of Agriculture can hear me. And Mr. Speaker, I spoke with a smile from the beginning of my presentation, but I now move to a very sore and sensitive topic, and I'm referring to Head 41, subhead 27. And I know the Minister of Agriculture is well versed with this head, fisheries development. On the repairs, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> I see an allocation to the tune of $711,300. And I see that these funds are MAC for works in Denry. Procurement of ice making machine and upgrade of existing vending area. Repairs of mooring and anchorage of jetty. Part to be used in Grosily. And it says repairs of general vending area and the slipway. Part to be used in cast trees, Mr. Speaker, to include electrical works. 
and in Soufre. Yes, in Soufre as well, Mr. Speaker, for the repairs to the ice machine and the washroom facility. Mr. Speaker, we in Mikud, we do not have a slipway, we do not have an ice machine, we do not have a washroom facility, the one that we had has been decommissioned for over a decade. We do not have a vending area. We cannot anchor a jetty because we do not have one as yet. And I trust that the Prime Minister is going to ensure that we do get ours, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we have to take into consideration that the people of Mikud North, <clears throat> a vast majority of the population in Mikud North, Mr. Speaker, they rely heavily on the fishing industry, Mr. Speaker, to earn a living. And I want to say that in Creole so that the fishermen by the sea in Miku are listening can hear, Mr. Speaker. Mwewe Lani, Rajan, Aba Ministry, Aba Department Fisheries, Ek Ministry Agricole, 711 mil dollar. Ek Mwewe Yoni, se la sa la pou servi pou fe, to avaye denri, yo ka ka jwen, a machine pou fe, la glas. Yo kai ka wanje kote ako yo ka vann kwesan. Mwen yon de la jen sa, yo kai ka sevi a dan dan pou wanje pou fe to avay an grozile. Yo kai ka wanje kote a yo ka vann kwesan an grozile. Ek yo ka kote a, la nan ba yo ka kwe slipwe sa yo ka sevi pou me. E di se kanot la ter, yo kai ka wanje sa tou. Mwen yon lan la an pou depase kastri pou yo wanje bagay kouan. Ek an soufouye pou yo wanje machine à café glacé et puis washroom facility et puis mais pas ouais mais vous l'avez dit ministre agricole mais pas ouais rien là bah il m'écoute et puis nous pas ni nous pas ni côté pour nous vendre nous pas ni washroom pour se pêcher à servir washroom là qui était là ça yo 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 pas à servir ça y a en haut douze ans moins de twelve years depuis yo pas à servir ça quoi nous pas ni un jetty et bien chez Mais moi, je sais que le Premier ministre a dit que nous jouons chez nous et que nous jouons chez nous l'année de ça. Et puis, je voulais dire que je vais accueillir le ministre agricole, je vais accueillir le ministre de l'Agriculture, je vais accueillir le ministre de la responsabilité pour les fisheries. Je vais dire, s'il vous plaît, donnez une attention aux fishermen de Miku. Et je sais que les ressources sont limitées, mais je pense que les fishermen de Miku ont exercisé assez de patience. And that they have been waiting and waiting and waiting. And I would like Minister of Responsibility for Fisheries to please move us in abeyance. Put our waiting to an end once and for all. So make our dear Minister who turn a lane. No, I suffer a same miku pour la petit pani um um pote pour nous avoir un poisson de nos panchi. Et que mes do pour pas faire nous heli et que pas ten nous voulons ten nous les nous kaheli. Et nous ça fait cuit qu'il faut assez pour nous nous faire cuit bon là même micro ça tout va être dénuit nous va mettre chaud tant cuit à bon daito à dénuit Mr Speaker I also notice that there's an allocation of 10 million dollars on the head 42 on the Ministry of Commerce um subhead 31 enterprise development and this 10 million dollars is a loan grant facility for micro small and medium sized enterprises and I see the member for Soufre smiling Mr Speaker and I think her smile means that she is weak. She cannot wait for the people of Mikudnov to benefit from this loan grant facility. And I want to encourage my small business owners in Mikudnov, Mr. Speaker, and entrepreneurs alike, to make optimum use of this facility. And as we strive to make micro, small, and medium-sized businesses in Mikudnov more viable. I don't see the Minister for Infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, um, but I know that he's somewhere listening. And I notice that he has a huge envelope on the head 43. Um, but I don't see much of that envelope assigned to me, could not, Mr. Speaker. So, but I'm pleased though that on the subhead 336, um, the Disaster Vulnerable Resilience and Recovery, I see an allocation of $200,000 for works on the Tumasi Bridge and $180,000 for the Prale Main Bridge, Mr. Speaker. And as you would know, these are the two bridges that demarcate our constituency. So you. These are the two bridges that makes Mikudnov, the two bridges that makes Mikudnov, Mikudnov. Um, and I'm happy that some attention will be given 
to these bridges because I think during the independence relay, Mr. Speaker, um, the independence baton relay, I stood very close to the Tumase Bridge. I actually went onto the Tumase Bridge and you can feel, I know that it's built in a way that it moves with the vehicles, Mr. Speaker. I don't know the movement there is becoming um, a little frightening. So I'm happy to know that some attention will be given to the Tumase Bridge and also to the Prale Bridge. But I must say, Mr. Speaker, that there is an urgent need to address the road situation in La Pointe, in St. Marie, and the wing road from the Volet Junction to Antos in Mikud. And I'm hoping, yes, I said it, the St. Marie Road. St. Marie Road is of, it needs urgent, urgent, urgent attention. Um, and I said urgent how many times? I want to answer to record me saying urgent on numerous occasions because the St. Marie Road is in a deplorable condition, Mr. Speaker. Um, and I'm fearful that very soon from now, maybe this year before we actually get to the rainy season, that this road might be impassable. So I'm calling on the Minister of, with responsibility for infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, um, to find it somewhere, find a little bit of breathing space to address at least one or two of these roads for us during this financial year, Mr. Speaker. On the housing and local government, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> I'm a little excited. I don't have anything bad to say about housing and local government this time. Yeah. Um, last year, Mr. Speaker, around this time, I stood in this honorable house and I mentioned about the plans to expand the Monipo Cemetery. And due to the fact that the Monipo Cemetery has reached its capacity, and we have a similar case in Mikud as well, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy to report here, Mr. Speaker, that the lands for the expansion have finally been acquired. And there is an allocation of $2.5 million, Mr. Speaker, on the head 48, Department of Housing and Local Government, subhead 65, Community Development Services, for the expansion of cemeteries across the island. So I'm asking the Minister of, with responsibility for housing and local government, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that Monipo now that we've acquired the land to ensure that Monipo and Mikud do get their fair share of the pie when distributing the resources. And the allocation of the National Housing Assistance Program of $5.25 million is also very encouraging to the people of Mikud North, Mr. Speaker. Only last week, I had a handing over of keys ceremony where I handed over keys to seven individuals who became new homeowners in the constituency. So I applaud the ministry for this initiative and the prime minister for endorsing this initiative. And I look forward this year, Mr. Speaker, since I see the allocation um, looks double from what it was last year, I look forward to doubling my, my contribution in Mikud North in terms of the amount of houses that I can make available to the people in Mikud North during this financial year. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on the head 56, Department of Economic Development and Youth Economy, Survey 41, National Infrastructure Development, Number 79, Constituency Development um, Project. I see an allocation of $21.726 million. And Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to say that last year, I was able to make optimum use of these resources. And I know that the people of Mikud North, they really felt the impact of the um, Constituency Development Project monies. I was able to do dreams for the field in Fiadel, drains for the field in the bottom of La Puerte. We're able to do footpath in Vietnam. We're able to do drains near the cemetery. Yes, there's a Vietnam in Monipo. We're able to do drains for the... <laughs> this Vietnam does not require um, RSS member for me, then we know. But we're able to do some drains, Mr. Speaker, near the cemetery in Monipo. Um, we're also able to do a few roads, concrete roads in the community by Godfrey going down the road up in Prale. We were able to do, um, we were able to do some rehabilitative works in the road um, next to the field in Prale as well. In Loba, Mr. Speaker, we were also able to do um, footpaths and drainage works there to ensure that the people living in these areas have access to their homes. We know that they had to endure muddy conditions for a prolonged period, Mr. Speaker. So I was happy that through the CDP, through my um, allocation under the CDP, that I was able to bring relief to quite a few people. And I know that there are more people within the constituency looking forward to benefiting from the CDP program. And I tell them that um, they can continue to look forward with hope 
as I know that I will also get a fair share of um, that CDP allocation that I see featuring on the head 56 Department of Economic um, Development and Youth Economy. So, my Sava Shai Moon, Miku, Monipo, you are Shai, and the Baga Yoka constituency development project. And puis, ça c'est l'argent ou pas servi pour faire petit projet, petit foot paf, petit canal à constituer sous. Et puis, à commune nous. Et puis, je vais servir l'argent ça là l'année passée pour me faire um, foot paf pour aller, nous faire chimer pour aller, nous faire chimer la poète, nous faire canal pour filer un fiadel, nous faire canal pour filer um, un fond la poète, nous faire foot paf un long bar, canal là, nous faire. Nous aider un chai, c'est fama à sous chimer, c'est fama à ça, dit là. Nous aider nous bailler un chai matio pour mettre à sous chimer, même si nous battons ça concrète chimer. Mais nous avons fait ça avec les réhabilitatives works pour être pour tout pour aller bo, bo, um, si mon facture, si vous passez là à présent, ou qu'après c'est à Haïwi, si vous passez là, je vous l'ai dit, je vais regarder pour l'année ça, je vais regarder pour faire plus de travail, et puis les moyens d'allocation de la CDP, je vais regarder pour faire plus de travail, je vais faire un peu de neuf, et puis je vais savoir qu'il y a des gens qui disent qu'ils ont brisé le 10, qu'ils ont brisé le date, nous ne pouvons pas faire tout le bagage de l'année, mais l'année ça, nous ne pouvons pas prioriser ce que ça nous a fait, nous ne pouvons pas faire ça qui brise, les gens qui brise plus obligé ni pour jouer en avant, si so, vous voulez dire que ni avez patience, mais l'année ça, nous allons continuer puis projet ça, et puis moi, ça a feature de la budget là, nous allons continuer à faire une allocation dans le um, <coughs> ministère économique et développement, nous allons continuer à faire une allocation, nous allons continuer à servir une allocation ça pour nous faire travailler dans la communauté. Mr. Speaker, je dois aussi parler of the um, under the Ministry of Tourism, <coughs> Community Tourism, Mr. Speaker. And I see the member for Castries South raising his head. And last year, I remember making a case here for uh, Mikunov to be one of the first beneficiaries of the. When this bill was introduced, so Mikunov to be one of the first beneficiaries of the community tourism project. And Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to say that Mikunov are doing their part in terms of, of, of taking the steps to ensure that we become beneficiaries of this project. And what I envisage for Miku and for Prale, Mr. Speaker, is a seamless experience similar to what exists right now at the at Soufre with the um, Hotel Chocolat and, the, and the, the chocolate experience. So the idea is that tourists would now be able to stop in Prale, Mr. Speaker, and would be able to go on to a kayak or boat, take a tour, see the Simos farm, see how Simos is being produced, Mr. Speaker, go to a drying plant, and then go to, to um, a store area, a vending area, where you would be able to buy your Simos gel, your CMOS caps, your CMOS shirts, CMOS um, powder, CMOS soaps, and everything made of CMOS. So we've already, um, I know that we've made our, we've already submitted to the Ministry of Tourism, and we're looking forward to seeing that our submission, we hope that is going to be um, accepted and funded, and hopefully very soon that we can actually see um, the Simos experience not be mentioned as a Simos experience just in this house, but when you pass down the bay that you can actually see a tangible Simos experience that you can go to and enjoy what Praline has to offer. And I have to say, Mr. Speaker, I want the record to say that the best Simos in St. Lucia comes from Mikud North. And the member for Viewfort North may, may want to say otherwise, but the best Simos in St. Lucia, and I think the last time I was on Anukuzi, Michael Gasper agreed that. Um, the best CMOS comes from Mikudnov. So I'm looking forward to being a beneficiary of the, of the um, community tourism initiative and seeing what we're going to get under the, <coughs> under the Ministry of Tourism. Youth and Sports, Mr. Speaker, we know what Mikudnov has done in terms of youth and sports. We produce some of the best cricketers in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, we speak of the Walters, we speak of Gary Maffrey, we speak of Sean Neal Edward, Mr. Speaker, an upcoming, an upcoming talent. And we continue to produce, Mr. Speaker, those of you who remember the Dream 11, remember um, Monipo made the Dream 11 look like there was no competitors there for us, Mr. Speaker. And it is on, it is on that premise, Mr. Speaker, that um, I have approached the Minister for, with responsibility for youth and sports, and I look forward to the Wayne Plain Field, Mr. Speaker. The Wayne Plain Field is one of the biggest fields. Uh, most people who play cricket in St. everyone who played cricket in St. Lucia, anyone who played cricket at a certain level had to go to the Wayne facility. If you've not been to the Wayne facility, then you've just been playing backyard cricket, Mr. Speaker. So it is on that premise that I've, went, I've gone to the Minister with responsibility for youth and sports, Mr. Speaker. And 
I know that he made the pronouncements elsewhere, but I'm happy to, to say that we're looking forward in Mikudnov to seeing a pavilion being placed at the went playing field, to see proper lighting being placed at the went playing field, um, proper concessionary areas, seating areas, vending areas for the people of Mikudnov. We would like to see people come to went play facility and enjoy cricket for what it is. I think for too long the people have that have been there have had to endure. When it rains, we have to run. Um, even the washroom facility, we've not had one for a long time, and even the one that we have because of the distance that it is. So I'm looking forward to this piece of investment. <laughs> yes, we've had makeshift stands, Mr. Speaker. The Grassroot Youth and Sports Club has used Galvanize um, and a few poles, Mr. Speaker, to make their own home at the went playing field. And I think it is time now, it is opportune for us to upgrade the facility and ensure that we can see more young talent growing out of, um, coming out of the, the WEN facility. And we know what Monipo can offer, what Miku can offer in terms of cricket. So I look forward to the WEN playing facility, the improvement of the WEN playing facility this year. I'm hoping that the member for Castries North was listening when I made my mention of the Seth Mary Road, Mr. Speaker. So I may have to say it again that I want him, I want him to, to watch me when I'm asking for the roads, Mr. Speaker. The Lapointe Road, the Seth Mary Road, the Volet Road, the Volet Wing Road that goes back to Anto, Mr. Speaker. These roads have been in deplorable condition. And I'm hoping, I don't see them reflecting anywhere in this year's budget, Mr. Speaker. But I'm hoping that the member, the member for Castries North and Minister for Infrastructure find some breathing space somewhere within that big envelope, Mr. Speaker. It can be in the peel of the envelope. Just find a little space for Miku to include Miku and to be able to give us at least, at least, we'll not ask for all three, but if you're going to give us two, 66% is a pass member. So if you give us the two, we'll accept it. So we're asking for at least two of these um, roads to be repaired this year, in this financial year. And I'm happy that the member has agreed to go and visit my roads later. This, this is very encouraging for me, um, Mr. Speaker. And I know that when he sees it for himself, that there's no way that he's not going to break and he's not going to assist us with at least two of the roads, especially the Set My Road. Especially the Set My Road, uh, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I will not repeat what I heard the member for Shozel said, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> For I may be cautioned, I may be cautioned if I decide to go down that route. But Mr. Speaker, um, in closing, I want to, to give my full support um, to the estimates on revenue and expenditure. And I want to say that I know the batsmen coming after me. Um, they're in for long innings. And the opposition, I know, Mr. Speaker, might bowl a peeping do here and there. And, but we're guaranteed that we're guaranteed that these peeping do's that they're going to go. And if they realize that the peeping do take it too much licks, Mr. Speaker, they may resort to chucking the ball. Full toss. But I hope he says a full toss, and you know what happens to full toss. We hit that for six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hit that for six. So, Mr. Speaker, I know that they will, <coughs> the opposition will come in and bowl a few peeping do's. But I am, as I tell you, there is not even enough opposition for these peeping do's to pass. And the batting lineup is long, and I know that the bowlers may become very weary. They may become tired. However, um, I thank the member for Castries East, Mr. Speaker, for ensuring that he prepared a very good batting surface for us as colleague parliamentarians. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I want to say thank you. And I want to thank, Mr. Speaker, the people of Mikud North, Mr. Speaker. I want to say a special thank you to the people of Mikud North for giving me the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to be able to represent them in this honorable house, Mr. Speaker. The journey has not been the easiest, Mr. Speaker. It has been a learning curve for me, but with the support of my <coughs> friends in the constituency, with the support of my colleague parliamentarians, Mr. Speaker, um, it has really been a refreshing one. And I thank my colleague parliamentarians for giving me the big brother experience, the hand-holding experience that they've given me through this journey. And I look forward to many more budgets to come in this honorable house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.